Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and operator of CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record at 4.45 p.m. Pacific time every Monday. If you want to call in your hand, check out the phone number in the description. Uh, okay. So, it's 25750 effective. Yep. Uh, I opened UTG1 with Ace of Clubs, King of Hearts to 20. Yep. Uh, folds to an unknown kid uh, who three bets to 70 in the hijack. Yep. Uh, and I end up flatting when it gets back to me. Everybody else folds. So UTG1, Ace King off the 20, kid three bets to 70 in hijacks. So you're just heads up. And this is a pretty good hand to flat here, heads up with no dead money in between. You're playing 150 big blinds effective. This kid's unknown. So you flat. And uh, go to the flop. And just one little quick thing too is like when he sat down, he bought in. Uh, he had like a backpack and he had a bunch of larger chips in them. So I just assumed that he's a decent player. He has a bunch of blacks and he even has some one K chips and stuff. So where's this played out? This is out of Florida, Florida too, somewhere. Yeah, Palm Beach. Okay. Okay. Uh, the flop is Ace Jack Six Rainbow. Ace of Spades, Jack of Hearts, Six of Clubs. You have Ace King. Um. Right. Okay. So you hit. You know, one of the best, one of the better flops you can hit, obviously. I think so too. Yeah, I yeah. check. Uh, he bets seventy five, and I call. Okay. One of the things here too, and some, I think some people saw me uh, play a hand against Ryan Feldman a few months ago in a four bet pot, where the mm -hmm. pot size was, you know, we weren't super deep. And here, you're not going to be super deep either. I mean, you're really only dealing with three to four pot size bets left in a three bet pot. I would probably tend to check call here on a, on a non-draw heavy board, but if I do play Ace King passively and the board is somewhat draw heavy, there's nothing wrong with actually check raising an Ace or a King high board to make your hand sort of look like a bluff, and, unless you've got a reason to think that a guy's just going to continue to barrel. Um, you know, if it comes out like Ace Deuce Deuce, and you think he's just going to barrel, barrel, barrel off you three bats, or you know what I mean, some some something yeah. like that. But I don't mind a check call here. So seventy five and a call. You mean the hand that you had tens and he had aces? Is that the one you're talking about? No, I had ace king and oh. he had four bet with like seven eight suited in a four bet pod. It was on live of the bike and um, the board came out ace high, ace seven deuce, and I check raise flop basically. Oh okay, okay. and he continued. He actually obviously. did call my check raise, yeah, and then I jam turn and he folded. He only had a seven, but ace of spades, jackal heart, six of clubs, villain bet seventy five, and you call. Turn is the ace of diamonds. So it completes the rainbow. Yep. Obviously, like this is a pretty dreamy board for my hand, but I I check, and mm -hmm. uh, he bets two hundred pretty quickly. So at this point, the pot is what right around three hundred. He bets two hundred. That's five. That so if you call the pot seven, and you only have like what three fifty left, is that right? You've put in two seven. No, three fifty. You have four hundred left, right? Yeah, so if I'm putting in two and we put in... So if you shove, right, the pot... You just only have 400 left, right? So so if yeah, you yeah. shove, oh, yeah. the pot's 1,100, 400 for him to call. I mean, it, it seems to me like, especially when you said it's the ace of diamonds, so it's ace of spades, jack of hearts, six of clubs, ace of diamonds, there really are no draws out there. So I don't see too many people that are able to fold trip aces here to a check raise, and he's going to be getting three to one. And unless he's a really like an ass like just totally clueless how is he going to go for three barrels after you go call call here you know what i mean i, I would just check jam here uh, i just don't yeah, see okay. somebody bluffing here when you call again uh and occasionally like if he's got a weak ace he might check the river behind if he's got like ace five or something like that now the times that you might like, sometimes call here on the turn is if there if you want to gamble like with a draw and make your hand po possibly look like a draw here, but even still, you've just got so many ace axes here, I feel like, that are a fair amount of defense here to a raise. Um, if you're calling with, you know, ace king, ace queen, ace jack suited, maybe ace ten suited, some of the other best ace suited hands, ace five, ace nine, unless he's just a total maniac, I, I just feel like there isn't going to be much of a bluffing frequency, and it would be a disaster if he somehow checks behind here at the end. So I would just check shove now. I'm actually kind of surprised. So all your strong aces, you'd be check raising, not just not just ace king, obviously. No, Basically, not not like well. What do you mean? Well, my strong aces, I don't know, ace king, what for I kind sure. Of thought in the moment was if he has, if he has, it's unlikely he has an ace, obviously, because there's only one left. Um, I think that if he has like kings, queens, 
Ken's, like, I don't know. I, like, I don't know if he's ever calling. I don't know what he's calling with by check job. I think it looks so strong. Yeah, but I mean, even I, I don't think he's folding an ace, right? And I don't think he's bluffing. I, I just, your, your, your check call, check call line is just so, I mean, if he has like some sort of gut shot, like King 10 or Queen 10, that's not going to fire the river as a bluff at the end, you're almost just sort of giving him a free card. I mean, I think this is how extreme this hand is. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you wanted to sort of protect your calling range here, then the idea would be like, yeah, okay, you check call with your worst aces, like ace five, right? Maybe ace nine. Mm-hmm. And maybe you go but with, your- maybe even ace queen, to be honest with you, if you, if you sometimes fold off. I mean, you know, ace queen is probably, but, but ace king, I would definitely check raise all in here now. Okay. I, I did have a slight consideration. You're probably right, though, that it's very unlikely he's going to go for three barrels if he is bluffing. But I kind of thought, like, hmm, if he does have some kind of bluff, because he seems like a like a young kid that knows what he's doing. Like, Yeah, but even if a young kid, but how, how old are you, by the way? 28. Okay, so you're a young, I mean, you look like a young kid to him, too, um, or a younger guy, right? So, mm-hmm. but I was going to say, like, if, if the guy knows what he's doing, it would be a pretty poor, uh, I, you know, if you, if you put this situation into, you know, if you flip it around and you take two stabs, like, as a three bet, like, say you had three bet, like, you know, so you had sort of, like, gone on a limb and three bet, like, 9-10 suited or something like that, and you took a stab on the flop with backdoor equity. Now the turn was an ace, and you're like, you know what? I'm going to bet again here, and he'll believe me. He'll fold out everything but an ace, and then he calls the turn, right? And now the river is like a brick, like a deuce, and he checks. Mm-hmm. Are you going to bluff the river because you have the bottom part of your range? I just think that that would be a spew. You know what I mean? No, it, He's just it so terrible, likely to be an ace. So that's, 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 that's my thinking, you know? Mm-hmm. So you make the call. And the river is the queen of clubs. Wow, that's interesting. So the river is the queen of clubs, which means that the pot, like I said, the pot's 700, right? And now it's f- you've got 400 left. Um, oh, man. I mean, now, I mean, obviously now you lose to ace queen and you lose to some gutters and stuff like that. Well, you lose to the king 10 gutter. Um what was your plan if the river was a brick? You were still going to check, right? Yeah, if were, I was basically checking. I think every river. It didn't matter what it was. I was, I was, I was check. My plan was to check call, especially if he bombs. Like no matter what he does, especially if it's a brick. Yeah. And for a second, what I wanted to ask you was, when I saw the queen, I thought about it for a little bit before I checked, and I kind of thought like, man, this is a brutal card. But I know sometimes you talk about people being scared when they necessarily shouldn't be. I mean, yeah, he could have ace queen and he could have maybe like a gut shot, like you said, but it doesn't really change that much. No, it's not that it. it's not necessarily that I'm scared of what he has. I feel like now if you take a check call, check call line and now you donk shove the river like a hand that was a weak ace, like an ace 10 and ace nine and ace five, those hands where I feel like we could have gotten value on the turn. If you just up front shove now on a total rainbow board, if he's any type of player, he shouldn't call with ace five or ace nine. Um, I mean, you probably can't screw this one up too much. I would still probably at this point, it's probably very, very close here. Um, Maybe I'm trying to think like maybe checking here is better because it would be so strong for you to upfront shove. But that's why I think, I think here the, the turn play is really where it's sort of, I don't think I would find myself in the spot here. You know what I mean? So what it, you ended what ended up happening? You checked. I ended up checking, and he ended up checking back. So and I mean, I I don't know what he really he like. He might have gone for the double barrel and given up on the river. He might have had some kind of showdown value, like you said, and the queen kind of froze him a little bit. Yeah, like you do talk about people being showdown monkeys. He might be one. He might have had like ace nine suited or like ace ten even. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I, I'm glad I called it in, though, because I honestly didn't even really think that the the check raise on the turn was, I don't know, was optimal, I guess. But um, Well, I mean, look at what, I mean, what if you have, like, pocket jacks? I mean, that's still got to be, I mean, that, I, that's probably even a better check raise than ace-king, because he's going to have more aces. 
I was going to say, I on think I'm more likely to check Ray Jax because of that fact that he could easily have his king with me not having his king. I think it's obviously more likely that he does. But I still think that you time. have to have like some of the, you know, if you want your, 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 your smoothest slow plays, maybe you check call like ace jack. You know what I mean? Because it's just like blocking absolutely everything. I'm talking about on the turn, but I would, I would, you know, the jacks and the ace king would definitely be check raises, though, for me. I mean, as played with these stack sizes. Uh, Randy, thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Hey, guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button, and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA200. Click on the link right there.